well going in this day and age we have a pandemic of course no one knows how to behave in the pandemic and Christmas I'm still on the fortune that I'll be spending it with some of my family and my middle brother being a complete not a hydrochondria even at the age of excuse me 32 uh, said can you get tested for the files uh, peace of mind and all this stuff was uh, Herbert uh, his health And um, so off I go today. I did one back in April with the RAF at one of these dry through places. This one was kind of dry through. I got told to go in the booth, fair enough. Do you know what to do? do you know? I was picking out the bags. And they're like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to get a bag open. Then I swabbed my nose and it came out of blood. So I had to get a new stick swab, which was treated like I was you know, getting ready to relieve Mafeking. That's a bit of a scum. And, um, <sighs> Sorry, I'm walking uphill. And then I put it in the bag. Hold it up. And then the other bag. Oh, okay. And there's two of them standing there going. Ooh. And I said, look, what's wrong? Because I'm standing there like flipping Bruce Forsyth from the Generation game. And they go, well, it's on his own bag. Oh, okay. So I carried on. I'm going to put it. No, no, what are you doing? Nothing. But I'm doing what he says. And they're like, So I said, am I doing it wrong? You're not saying anything. And no, you're okay. And I get told, you know, put it in the, did, and then apparently I hadn't gotten the sit bag. That's five minutes of this. You know, what's that? Like, Look, I want to get out of here. You know what I mean? No, I mean, you don't know what you're doing. And then, um, I went, okay, I'm done. And he goes, right, see the bin behind you? I go, yeah. I've got my, sort of got my battery, but I've already used it. And then they go, the bin behind you? I go, yeah. Go see it? And I go, yeah. And I go, for God's sake. And then they camp it off. The guy you have to hand it to wanted it placed at the bottom of the bag. And I thought I did. eventually did it but never not since a busy period on the bus have I been spoken to like an idiot for so long and um leaves me with a fair, fairly bad taste in my mouth gonna come well, I'm just no. so my brother over does watch this so I'd like to thank you for making me do this because I am now fantastically annoyed and as you might have seen on this video I inadvertently caught somebody using their phone drive and you tried to go through a red light never mind well my precious few I'm still deaf in one ear so I apologize if I start shouting so I thought I'd film it a little bit differently
when I started doing videos, I could prop it up on my light switch. As you can see, can't. I don't know if I do it as a separate fit, but you might have just seen if you are buffered. Um, my out of breath complaint about the testing centre. <laughs> I ended up capturing a guy on his phone driving, so I don't know. Um, do it now. Tomorrow is Tuesday, which is, I think, now 40 weeks since that day in the office, so we'll get that out of the way. This is our Tuesday briefing, I suppose. Um, two days now into tier four, and as I said, I had to go and do. Um, you know, no, I never do on a tour bus. I had to do a, a corona test because my brother, as I said yesterday, uh, wanted me to do um, wanted me to do a test for Christmas for various reasons. And uh, I'll, I'll say it now without being out of breath. Essentially, I turn up and it's a fake, a fake cloying experience. Uh, uh, OCD people. You know, I opened up the plastic envelope, whatever it was, the jiffy bag. I had two plastic bags within it, with uh, whatever to see that with, and a file and a swab. I had to get another swab because uh, I got blood from my left nostril. So I think I, well, I must have had some kind of nosebleed without knowing, not a massive one. And um, constantly, like, you know what you're doing, you know you're okay, yeah, fine, it's fine if you don't know it, but you don't need somebody standing over you, I mean, I'm getting fairly self-conscious at this point, uh, already, sticking something down my throat, I am not that kind of person to stick things down my throat, I've done it since I was five, probably, um, and then, you know, I, sh I said, look, I, got the I held the bag up, and he, he looked at it, well, it's, it's not right, it's all this, you know, well, that's quite funny, uh, and then we got his mate, and they're both looking at him. I go, it's a, and I went, there's something wrong. No, it's just, you know. Okay. And then I, they, they came back. I said, there we go. Where did, you, you not got a weather bag? No. Where did you get those two? Well, the plastic envelope. You sure? Yeah, I got them from the plastic envelope. There's nothing else inside it? No. More or less. And I actually heard my voice go, I want to get out of here. <laughs> I just, you know. It's only ever meant that I last, oh, I was a little bit dense. I mean, I hadn't long been awake when I'd done this, and I just witnessed another drug deal in this delightful town of Ellsbury. Not that I, I mean, I'm not bothered by drug dealing now. The police aren't, so. But it's when you see in broad daylight, they don't care, do they, let's be honest. And also, I suppose, it's the only economy going in Ellsbury. Um, and I was like, it just felt like I was being patronised and taught to. I know I, I'm an idiot. I don't pretend to be intelligent, and so I do these stupid videos for no reason, it seems, other than you know, back in the day it was to show you what Pete is like having anxiety and depression and OCD and isolation. Um, but as I was saying, because uh, I got interrupted, um, I don't know why I did it like that. Because I was interrupted, there you go, that's much more sensible. Uh, let's not talk to our, you know, I don't mind being taught to an idiot if it's within valid reason. But when you know, you're trying uh, your best and everything, and by people that are meant to be you know, testing you for whatever it is, for something. And then it got better, of course, because Ellsbury is Ellsbury, and Ellsbury never does anything right, probably because of John Hampden back in 1642. Never since John Hampden in 1642, trying to stand up for the citizens and dying in the end on Hampden, uh, Hampden Fields or whatever during the Civil War. There were protesters, demonstrators, whatever you want to call them. I was waiting for my friend in the town centre, Market Square, by the old clock tower. And if you ever want to know what Market Square looked like, the opening credits of the Agatha Christie, Margaret Rutherford, a play and film, Murder at the Gallop, I think it is. I forget that these films are called Murder, so yeah. Murder at the Gallop, and you see Market Square in 1962. The year before the great train robbers were tried at the magistrates and i saw a crowd of people where they standing near and on the clock tower and that's where usually i meet my friends so i stood to one side and realized they're talking about covid one of them's got a sign saying uh, i love my i'm proud of my country but it's a, it's, it's a dictatorship or something uh, covid 1984 that was very clever 
not. And then there were three speakers in the time I was there. One woman saying something about Magna Carta. No one actually seems to actually realise what Magna Carta is. Not that I heard. And then this young lady stood saying something like, uh, Kofit's got a 99% fatality rate. And then this, you know, you know, all this apparently, you know, civil liberties and that. Again, where are these? If only we could take these people back in time and get them through the Black Death, you know. Oh, civil liberties are being restricted. I guess Black Death and the plague of 1665 is different, isn't it? And the Spanish flu of 1980-21, you know, the mortality rate was a lot worse, but people have died. And my friend turned up to meet me because she'd been somewhere at Wilkinson's, and then. I had an immediate, I know, you don't, she's not the kind of person you ever see angry, and she didn't look thrilled, so I said, you're okay, and then of course I forgot, to my shame, that her grandfather died of Covid a couple months ago, so yeah, there's a 99% or whatever percentage of mortality and fatality, whatever you want to call it, and people, you know, it's not, but people have died of this, it's a pandemic for a reason, you know, spread and whatever. But, you know, China have recovered already. You know, well, China's a dicta actual dictatorship, really, isn't it, technically? Or at least it's ran a lot more autocratically than we are ran. You see, people call Boris a, a dictator. He has to go through Parliament, and he has managed to convince Parliament to do things, and certainly the Queen to prorogue Parliament the, uh, last year. But there is a point, I would have thought, in this country, that he can be stopped or at least something comes into play, be it the commons or the lords. And if that fails, then the, the Queen, I think, has got some kind of power to, uh, I don't know, well, they used to be able to close Parliament, didn't they? With a lot more firmer force. I mean, Cromwell cleared out House of Par the Long Parliament in 1653. You know, the infamous, you know, you've sat here long enough for the love of, uh, for no purpose, for the love of God go. Wherefore was quoted back to Chamberlain in 1940 by Leo Amory. What made that protest slightly trivially more annoying for me, anyway, was that uh, there was this young lady of a film, you know, filming, speaking, sort of panned around, and, and then the camera sort of reached my side of the square. I stood well away from it by about 20 feet by myself folded watching and it felt like uh certainly the camera was aimed my way she was doing something on the screen you know like pressing on the ring as she held the camera up so forgive me uh, sort of like you know holding it like this and you can't see my finger doing it but you know touching the screen doing something and then uh, i sort of shook my head because it felt like i was being filmed and certainly maybe even zoomed in on and she noticed that so my mush might actually turn up on something with a lot of online things. I'm not saying it will. I'm not going to go looking for it. That's the trouble with things nowadays. So that's the state of play, really, almost 40 weeks in. I think I'm idiot. I know I'm idiot. I've already established that fact. I just... Government has to do what it has to do. The whole... The Prime Minister... Not every Prime Minister in our history since the 1750s has had to put their foot down as much, restrict as much, but Prime Ministers sometimes have to in the state of a national emergency, and this is national emergency. Yeah. If Boris wanted to be like Winston, he should have been uh, maybe when this was starting to get underway and the lock first and proper lockdown started, and Morrison's take note, tier four, means effectively uh, you should bring back is effectively a lockdown and you know let's have people queuing up outside again i'm going to aim at the ceiling because you don't want to see my face i know i bang on about it but there's a you know you want us to social distance how can we social distance in a shop that doesn't stop people from coming in Necessarily. Tesco, who does it, obviously. Great shows do it, obviously. I think it's Sainsbury's um, doing a half-baked idea because uh, the staff do what they want in that shop. Usually with, uh, with ignoring customers. And Snappy Snaps and Poundland were doing it. 
well, until today anyway, because today's the first proper day of tier four. The coffee shops have people on the door. And, um, Morrisons don't. No one to say you wear a mask or anything. And then you go in there, and each aisle's full of people. You try and social distance, but you can't because people will stand behind you. So, uh, and also don't use South Western Railways. They don't believe anything they say, uh, you say to them. <laughs> I spent a week on and off engaging with them because their train left two minutes early when I stood, reached the doors. Two minutes. And uh, they say, well, it's not a question. We don't, it, we do believe you, but the train, anyway. So that's probably it, video wise, until after Christmas when I do my 29th December nonsense. Well, it's not nonsense to me, but it is to the internet. I will feed the same.